medical mycology and virology and uh, the subject code is dmls double dmls four double zero five and currently we are in the unit one and unit two so i would like to tell a small thing students if you if you see the unit one and unit two almost we completed the syllabus see here uh, introduction to medical my uh, virology finished introduction to medically important viruses that means the classification of viruses finished then structure of virus finished classification of virus finished then uh, uh, multiplication of viruses finished then uh, collection transportation storage of sample for viral diagnosis this part is pending this we can discuss today and uh, other other things are staining techniques in virology this i will discuss then we have other topics like processing of samples for viral culture like egg inoculation tissue culture this we finished actually egg inoculation and tissue culture finished so the only thing that are pending are collection transport straining or straining techniques used in virology and some viruses they have given only four viruses hiv hbv hcv eia and uh, pcr so i think only five or four four to five topics are uh, pending which will be finished by this week so uh, most probably by next week uh, i will finish unit 1 and unit 2 okay so i will directly go to today's topic all these things we studied everything we know the application basic introduction <coughs> types of dna and rna viruses then we discussed uh, these things then morphology resistance and susceptibility then we discussed about uh, application <coughs> then we discussed about viral cultivation in viral cultivation we discussed that uh, virus can be cultivated in animal inoculation embryonated egg and tissue in tissue we have uh, organ cultures excrement cultures and cell cultures cell cultures are of three types primary diploid and continuous cell lines continuous cell lines has a benefit compared to other cell lines because they can be regenerated they can be recultivated endlessly in the laboratories that is why those cells are also called as uh, immortal cell lines one best example of immortal cell line is hela cells right um, then we discussed about certain advantages and disadvantages of animal inoculation then all these basic things then we discussed in detail about the structure of embryonated egg and its parts like air sac core allantoic membrane allantoic cavity yolk sac embryo uh, then uh, amniotic sac and albumin deposit so these are the basic uh, uh, parts of the embryonated egg and uh, uh, we discussed about the inoculation of various viruses in the Uh, multiple locations of the embryonated egg say for example herpes pox and uh, uh, sarcoma viruses will be inoculated into the cam membrane of the egg whereas influenza is inoculated in the amniotic sac herpes in the yolk sac whereas uh, mumps certain cattle viruses will be inoculated in the allantoic cavity so similarly uh, various viruses will be inoculated into uh, various uh, locations of the embryonated egg then uh, yeah and uh, these viruses will be detected uh, depending upon these things this i will come today okay now uh, we also discussed that uh, not all viruses are possible to grow in the embryonated egg so that's why we will go with uh, alternative methods like tissue cultures we have organ explant and cell cultures yes you know there are different types of cell cultures primary diploid and uh, continuous cell lines so continuous cell lines has an advantage that we discussed about the uh, henrietta lack story so these cell lines can grow indefinitely so that is the advantage of uh, these cancer cell lines hela cell lines mm. and all these things are completed yeah in today's topic i will discuss about uh, detection of viruses in cell cultures so this will be our today's topic so today i will discuss in detail about detection of viruses in cell cultures so there are totally six methods of uh, detection of uh, Uh, virus okay so is everyone paying attention shall i continue yes sir. yes perfect so i'm going to the detection of viruses so now this topic is see we inoculated virus in the uh, we cultivated the virus either we cultivated in the animal or in the embryonated egg or in the cell lines after cultivating the virus how we are going to detect the presence of virus in the tissue in the animal or in the cells or in the egg how are the methods 
that are used that we are using in order to identify the virus, whether virus really uh, replicated in the tissues or not. In order to identify its detection, its presence, we are going with certain methods, certain techniques. Why we are opting these techniques? Because these are the indirect methods because of the costly affair with uh, electron microscope. Since we cannot detect virus directly, so we will detect its presence indirectly via multiple methods, such as detection of cytopathic affairs, detection of inclusion bodies. Uh, we will conduct heme absorption test, interference test, transformation, and some immunofluorescent tests. So with the help of these methods, we can able to detect viral presence indirectly within a given sample. It can be a tissue sample, blood sample, or any other body fluid. So there are multiple methods of detection of viruses in cell cultures. So first, let us start with the cytopathic effect. So we, I already discussed about the cytopathic effect and inclusion body. Let me take a marker here. Uh, have you remember students? Can anyone tell me the what is cytopathic effect and, and uh, inclusion body? What is the major difference between these two? So cytopathic path effect is like the uh, when there is morphological change in tissue or. Very good. Hmm. So morphological changes in the tissue. So the changes that underwent in the tissue upon replication of virus. So tissue morphology change is called a cytopathic effect. Whereas viral inclusion bodies during virus replicating in a single cell, this uh, it will left, leave certain uh, substances. They are called as inclusion bodies. So within a single cell, if we identify certain things, they are called in inclusion bodies. <coughs> if the overall tissue morphology changes, means that is called a cytopathic effects. So this is clear for you. So I'm, I'm moving on to the cytopathic effects. That means uh, the types of different tissue morphologies happened due to presence of virus. So let us see these cytopathic efforts. So, so these are cytopathic efforts. So the introduction is uh, many viruses cause morphological changes in the cultured cells in which they grow. These morphological changes are called as cytopathic efforts. So the viruses that are causing cytopathic efforts are called as cytopathogenic viruses. And the viruses that doesn't uh, form the cytopathic efforts, they are called non-cytopathogenic viruses. So keep in mind, not all viruses will show cytopathic efforts. That is why the viruses that will show cytopathic efforts are uh, further classified. Cytopathogenic viruses and non-cytopathogenic viruses. Now, uh, I have given only four examples of uh, cytopathic efforts, but there are many types actually. Almost uh, uh, 12 to 20 uh, different uh, types of cytopathic efforts are, uh, we can be observed. Okay, so out of them, these four are uh, most commonly seen uh, cytopathic efforts. So these four are first one is uh, syncytium formation. So syncytium formation means here cells will enlarge. First of all, the cells will enlarge and these cells will aggregate together. They will aggregate together and they will form multinucleated giant cells. So they will form multinucleated giant cells. So formation of multinucleated giant cells is called as syncytium formation. Usually syncytium formation <coughs> is seen in measles infection. So if you get measles infection, the skin will underwent this type of uh, morphology. The skin, uh, you can able to see blisters on the skin, right? If you observe this tissue under the microscope, then we can able to see this pattern or uh, th these visuals where we can see multinucleated giant cells can be visualized. So one of the virus that can cause uh, this syncytium formation is measles virus. So measles virus and respiratory syncytial virus, virus will show this uh, uh, syncytium formation. So this is one type of cytopathic effect. Then the second one is cell necrosis. Cell necrosis means here the cells will die. So death of cells are called as cell necrosis. So cell necrosis usually happens due to enteroviruses. That means uh, intestinal viruses, okay? Enteroviruses, for example, polio. So polio 
and also hepatitis b hepatitis b so here this hepatitis virus will destroy the liver it will necrotize the liver okay <coughs> liver will go in irreversible damage liver will go death actually that is due to uh, cellular necrosis of the liver so such viruses that will induce cell necrosis those viruses are called as uh, uh, this cell necro uh, cell necrotogenic viruses few examples are enteroviruses like polio and hepatitis b so hepatitis b and polio virus will show this is cell necrosis okay then third one is cellular clumping cellular clumping is here the cells will clump like your uh, blood test when we are performing this slide blood test the blood will clump right the the red blood cells will clump together right they will aggregate together and they will make a clumps so similarly uh, the tissue cells will undergo clumping in the presence of viral replication such a phenomenon is called cellular clumping and the cellular clumping is usually seen in uh, adenoviruses so adenoviruses will show cellular clumping adenoviruses will show cellular clumping then the next one is rounding of cells so here the all cells will become perfect spheric spherical in shape they will become perfect round like objects okay in appearance uh, this happens due to nuclear destruction due to nuclear destruction cells will undergo this rounding effect this uh, nuclear destruction is very commonly seen by dna viruses especially herpes viruses okay all herpes viridae if, if uh, herpes viridae family viruses will show this uh, rounding of cells can anyone recall me uh, types of herpes viruses do you remember students what viruses present in this family herpes viridae viruses present in herpes viridae can you tell me there are three classes alpha viruses beta viruses and gamma viruses alpha viruses herpes simplex 1 can you tell me others sir herpes simplex 2 and Very ebola good. virus ebv not oh, ebola okay please uh, it's epstein barr virus okay epstein, epstein barr virus, virus. Yes, then in the beta class in the beta class what we have so cmv cytomegalovirus very good cmv and in the gamma vz vz uh, stands for varize good as a cancer venezuela varicella zoster virus uh, varicella zoster virus so all these herpes viruses will show this rounding of cells so this is all about uh, cytopathic effect student is it clear or do i need to elaborate it even further so cytopathic effect means it is the uh, change in the tissue morphology uh, upon viral replication is called a cytopathic effect this is occurred by viruses the viruses that will show cytopathic effects are called cytopathogenic viruses and the one that won't show are called non cytopathogenic viruses a few examples of cytopathic effects are syncytium cell cell necrosis cellular clumping and rounding of cells syncytium is shown by measles virus syncytium means uh, uh, multi nucleated giant cells are seen in measles virus infection cellular necrosis is seen in polio and hepatitis b viral infection cellular clumping is seen in adenoviral infection and rounding of cells are seen in herpes viral infection so this is all about cytopathic effects okay same same story <coughs> so then next one so shall i move on to the next two topic students is the cytopathic effects clear to everyone any confusions in this topic no right no sir no sir fine so i'm moving to the second uh, uh, method of detection of virus so here uh, the second method is inclusion bodies detection of inclusion bodies of viruses so let us see what are inclusion bodies so inclusion bodies means these are the distinctive abnormal structures present within the cell upon the viral replication such uh, uh, abnormal bodies are called as inclusion bodies few examples of inclusion bodies like uh, negri bodies in uh, rabies guanier cowdery so there are different types of inclusion bodies and these inclusion bodies are viral specific 
if it is a dna virus this included inclusion bodies can be seen in the intranuclear that means within the nucleus of the cell if it is an rna virus then we can see intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies okay now so as i already stated dna virus will show intranuclear inclusion bodies whereas rna viruses will show intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies now so this was uh, uh, <coughs> identified first by cowdery so cowdery is a scientist who identified uh, these inclusion bodies now uh, classically these inclusion bodies are divided into two types intracytoplasmic that means inclusion bodies present in the cytoplasm of the cell and intranuclear inclusion bodies few examples of intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies are guanier bodies seen in smallpox negri bodies seen in rabies okay negri bodies in rabies guanier bodies in smallpox and we have one more bodies called handerson peterson bodies which are seen in molluscum contagiosum molluscum contagiosum means um if the people who are eating the diet okay if the people who are on the diet of eating snails from these snails there is a possible possibility of getting a infection a snail mediated viral infection called molluscum contagiosum so that is why if you are eating any meat you need to boil it you need to cook it properly uncooked meat is always a dangerous thing so uh, from this uh, snail meat we may get a viral infection in such case we can able to identify handerson peterson bodies so handerson peterson bodies are inclusion bodies which are seen in molluscum contagiosum infection negri bodies are seen in rabies infection whereas <coughs> guanier bodies are seen in smallpox infection okay then coming to the intranuclear inclusion bodies basically dna viruses will show this intranuclear inclusion bodies now keep in mind students the intranuclear inclusion bodies are further classified into acidophilic and basophilic that means acidic intranuclear inclusion bodies and basic in intranuclear inclusion bodies so we have ph below 7 okay so ph below 7 and we have ph above 7 so above 7 will be basophilic below 7 will be acidophilic i hope you know this one now uh, further further these are sub classified into two types cowdery type a and type b what is the uh, difference between cowdery type a and type b type a means all inclusion bodies will be in same size if all inclusion bodies are in the same size then they are referred as cowdery type a inclusion bodies now the second type is b in case of cowdery type b inclusion bodies will vary in their sizes some will be very large some will be very small so there will be multiple sizes of inclusion bodies so multiple size inclusion bodies are seen in cowdery type b whereas type a means all inclusion bodies will be in same size <coughs> sorry so few examples of uh, uh, intranuclear acidophilic cowdery type a inclusion bodies are varicella zoster virus herpes and yellow fever virus so varicella zoster and herpes virus will show cowdery type a acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies whereas polio virus will show cowdery type b acidophilic intranuclear inclusion body polio is cowdery type b whereas herpes simplex varicella zoster cowdery type a acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies then basophilic basophilic inclusion bodies are adenovirus and cytomegalovirus cytomegalovirus and adenovirus will show cowdery type b basophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies this table is very important students why this table is important because when we are performing a lab test when we are uh, when we get a, a histopathology slide into the lab in the for example um, we got a biopsy sample from a polio patient uh, from a polio patient okay now if you stain this biopsy thing with hnd staining you can able to see a peculiar inclusion bodies within the cells those inclusion bodies are it will be cowdery type b and those inclusion bodies will present inside the nucleus of the cell that means they will be acidophilic okay acidophilic inclusion bodies can be seen so just by seeing these inclusion bodies we can able to predict that the patient has a polio viral infection 
So understanding the morphology of inclusion bodies, their location and their pH and their size variation can able to give us an insight into the type of virus that the patient was affected. So that is why always uh, detection of inclusion bodies have a, a peculiar interest in lab diagnosis. So it will give an, a very easy method of uh, understanding or to diagnose the type of viral infection the patient has. Okay, so few examples are this one. Negri body seen in rabies, guanier in smallpox, Hannes and Peterson in uh, molluscum contagiosum. Then uh, intranuclear, we have acidophilic and basophilic. Further acidophilic, we have cowdery type A and B. So acid of intranuclear acidophilic cowdery type A are seen in varicella, Joshua, herpes and yellow fever. Whereas cowdery type B, acidophilic seen in polio. Whereas basophilic cowdery type B are seen in adeno and cytomegalovirus. Uh, it, it sounds tough in the beginning, but you must uh, uh, by heart this uh, table, students. This is very important. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I may ask like this a question like, uh, uh, in what viral disease you will identify negri bodies? Discuss in detail about its pathogenesis and lab diagnosis. So I can ask many indirect questions just purely based on the inclusion bodies actually. If I want to ask a question on rabies, I won't ask it, uh, discuss in detail about rabies. Rather than I will say, what, in what viral infection you will identify rabies? Uh, you will identify negri bodies? Discuss in detail about its pathogenesis. So you need to write with your own. So kindly pay attention to this slide, okay? So kindly uh, try to uh, memorize uh, the types of inclusion bodies and the associated virus. Okay, so yeah. So these are a few examples. Negri bodies, this is a negri body seen in rabies infection. So usually negri bodies are seen in a spinal cord biopsy. So within the spinal cord, you can able to see this negri bodies, whereas guanier bodies can be seen in the skin biopsy. In the skin biopsy, you can see uh, guanier bodies in a patient who has smallpox. Bollinger bodies seen in false pox. <coughs> so this is the Henderson Peterson bodies, adenoviral uh, inclusion bodies, herpes simplex, chicken pox, and uh, some viral inclusion bodies. So this you need to memorize. Is it clear, students? Is inclusion bodies clear? Yes, sir. So I will do a quick uh, Q&A session. Um, tell me the types of inclusion bodies. Types of inclusion bodies. We have in a cell. How many types of inclusion bodies we can detect? Intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Intranuclear, intracytoplasmic, and intracytoplasmic have negri, negri bodies, guanyin bodies. Yes, Pastor negri bodies, boral bodies. bodies. Okay, Gua, uh, okay, negri bodies in rabies, guanier bodies in smallpox. Smallpox and at least passion you, bodies in smallpox. Passion bodies in smallpox. Yes, passion bodies. Bollinger bodies in foulpox. Okay, at least uh, try to give me two to three examples. That is enough. Okay, if you need not to uh, buy hard all the table, but uh, uh, two to three viruses you need to memorize. Okay, then coming to intranuclear inclusion bodies, they are further divided into two types. Acidophilic and basophilic. Yes, acidophilic further classified into cowdery type P and type B. Yeah, type B. B is only polio. Polio is cowdery type B. Uh, acidophilic yes. intranuclear inclusion body. Whereas, uh, her, um, what is cowdery type A? Acidophilic inclusion bodies. Examples? Varicella, joster virus. and yellow fever. Yes, yellow herpes fever and varicella, joster. Two examples yes. is enough for me. Then, what about basophilic, intranuclear basophilic? Any one example? Adenovirus. 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 It's a cowdery type B type, okay? Cowdery type B. So, yeah. So, now you got some idea about inclusion bodies. Very good. So, and these are the pictures of uh, uh, various inclusion bodies, and you need to draw these pictures. If I'm asking illustrate uh, negri bodies, then you must draw this picture. Okay? They have a clinical importance. So, try to uh, memorize these things. Then, uh, how to identify these uh, uh, inclusion bodies? The best stain that we can use to. <coughs> 
detect this inclusion bodies is H and E staining only because H and E staining principle is always based on pH of the mm, component of the cell, right? So uh, H and E hematoxin will bind to the nucleus of the cell, whereas base uh, eosin will bind to the cytoplasm of the cell because it's vice versa, right? The pH variations. Uh, hematoxin is a basic dye that will bind to the acidic part of the cell, whereas eosin is a acidic dye that will bind to the uh, basic part of the cell, which is the cytoplasm. So that is why hematoxin is called intranuclear uh, stain, nuclear stain, whereas uh, eosin is called a cytoplasmic stain. And we will use the same H and D stain for the uh, visualizing the inclusion bodies because inclusion bodies are purely uh, classified depending upon their pH and their location. So H and D stain will be an ideal stain for uh, visualizing or to stain the inclusion bodies. So inclusion inclusion bodies can be visualized by using H and D stain. Uh, I hope you know the principle everything, right? So with the help of H and D stain, we can able to identify the inclusion bodies. So for example, this is a, a, an example of Negri bodies seen in a in a histopathology slide, which is stained with a H and D stain. Yeah. So that's it. So this procedure, this uh, protocols, I'm just uh, skipping this one because you already know the principle of H and D stain, and uh, we are using H and D stain for detection of uh, these inclusion bodies. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So next, a uh, third one. So 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 far in the viral detection, we discussed uh, two methods. One is uh, cytopathic efforts, then second one is inclusion bodies. The third one will be heme absorption test. So what is this heme absorption test? So now I will give you an, a, a virus like uh, influenza virus. Influenza virus has spike, spike proteins. On the surface of this influenza virus, it has two proteins called HA and NA. Okay, heme agglutinin uh, receptor and neuraminidase receptor. Uh, or in a nutshell, this influenza virus will show affinity towards the red blood cells. Blood in the presence of influenza virus will agglutinate because influenza virus has this agglutinogens on the surface of it, uh, the on the surface of the virus. Okay, so such uh, uh, heme uh, heme attracting viruses can be detected by using heme absorption test. For example, influenza virus. Presence of influenza virus in a tissue can be detected just by adding few drops of blood. Upon addition of the blood, if the blood turns into, if the blood agglutinated, that indicates that the tissue sample has influenza virus or the viruses that will agglutinate the blood. So we will use heme absorption test for the detection of heme absorption viruses. Uh, one best example is always uh, influenza virus. Okay. So presence of heme absorption viruses can be detected by a uh, heme absorption test. So yeah, so do you need any more clarity on heme absorption test? Is it clear students? So this is a cell culture. If in this cell culture, if we had a, uh, if we suspected this, uh, okay, imagine like this. We got a patient with a suspected influenza flu symptoms. So what we did, we took the patient blood and we added the sample to the cell line. And uh, we waited for one week, so the virus can able to replicate. Now I need to detect the virus in this cell culture. How I will detect? I will just add two to three drops of blood. If the blood agglutinated, that indicates presence of influenza, because I know that influenza heme absorption uh, virus. Even up after addition of blood, still there is no agglutination. Means that indicates negative for or absence of influenza in this uh, uh, culture, because I suspected patient has influenza infection but my test given negative. So that indicates he may not have influenza infection. So that is how we can able to uh, indirectly detect viral presence with the help of addition of red blood cells. And this test is called as a heme absorption test. Any, any doubt in this one, heme absorption? Blood agglutinating virus can be detected by adding blood to the tissue culture, that's it. Is it clear? Can I move to the next topic? Yes, students. So far I discussed three methods. One is cytopathic effort, inclusion bodies, and heme absorption. 
now i'm moving on to the fourth method of detection of viruses okay why this uh, zombie silence are you listening students yes sir i feel like i lost my internet yes okay <laughs> fine so the fourth one is uh, interference test so what is this interference test do you remember uh, i discussed about uh, this interference challenge test do you remember students we already discussed about this one uh, okay uh, what is the basic thing can a two viruses replicate in a same cell is it possible can two viruses replicate in a same cell it's not no, possible sir. only no, one sir. type of yes only one type of virus can infect one cell right so we, based on this analogy we are doing this interference test say for example rubella rubella is a non cytopathogenic non inclusion body showing virus that means rubella won't show any cytopathic effect rubella won't show any inclusion bodies then how we can able to detect rubella presence in the tissue in the tissue culture for that purpose assume we got rubella in this tissue culture and it is not showing anything now i will add a challenge virus like measles i know that measles will show syncytium formation even after addition of measles virus still i can't see any uh, cytopathic effect means that indicates presence of non cytopathic effect virus such as rubella virus so here <coughs> the preoccupied cells the virus that is preoccupied in the cells is interfering with this measles virus this measles virus cannot uh, replicate in the in the cells that are preoccupied by rubella virus okay so this measles virus can be stated as a challenge virus so we will add a challenge virus to the uh, tissue culture so even after addition of challenge virus still the cells are not undergoing any cytopathic effect means that indicates uh, presence of non cytopathogenic virus such as rubella virus so such viruses can be detected with the help of this interference challenge test so the full name of this test is interference challenge test which is used for detection of non cytopathogenic viruses so we got a cell culture and it has a uh, rubella virus so there won't be any change for the cell cultures okay there won't be any morphological change in the cell culture so what we will do now i will add a, a challenge virus such as measles virus upon measles virus still uh, it is not undergoing any challenges no cytopathic effect means that indicates uh, uh, the tissue was preoccupied by a rubella viral infection so this is called interference test do you need any more clarity on this interference test do you understood students can anyone explain me the same concept in hindi anyone can you explain this to me students interference test any one of you what is interference test do i need to give any specific name so you will come out oh afrin alam afrin see i'm going to mark your attendance now get ready you sir yes i'm ready hmm. sir uh, jo interference test hota hai na usme ye hota hai ki hum ek non cytopathogenic test matlab growth ko डिटेक्ट कर सकते हैं उसके अंदर एक साइटोपैथोजेनिक वायरस को ऐड करके उसमें क्या होगा जो एक फर्स्ट वायरस होगा वो सेकंड वायरस की ग्रोथ को इनहिबिट कर देगा यस वेरी गुड दैट्स इट से व्हाट अबाउट अदर स्टूडेंट्स अफरीन आलम आई एम गोइंग टू मार्क योर ऑप्शन सिंसियरली एंड यू कैन चेक दिस अटेंडेंस आफ्टर दिस क्लास नॉट एट ऑल रिस्पोंडिंग ओके so next uh, so so far we discussed the four methods first one is uh, cytopathic effects inclusion bodies then third one is uh, um, heme absorption test then fourth one interference test then fifth one will be transformation <coughs> transformation means very simple students first we got, we got a tissue like this so it has a columnar cells upon viral infection this columnar cells will be transformed into different morphology columnar cells may become cubo uh, cubical cells or squamous cells or they will undergo a cellular morphology 
cellular morphology will be changed upon viral infection okay upon viral replication such uh, uh, transformation of cells is called cellular transformation and cellular transformation is uh, uh, specifically observed among uh, carcinogenic viruses or the viruses that is, that will induce cancer all herpes viruses are ca uh, carcinogenic viruses there is a likelihood to get cancers upon getting infected by herpes viruses so all herpes viruses will show this cell transformation the cell transformation can be seen in herpes viruses especially okay so cell will change its shape it will transform into other shape so, and that is called a cellular transformation which is seen in uh, herpes viruses very commonly okay so herpes viruses can be detected upon observing cellular transformation okay then the last and final method of detection of virus is immunofluorescent te test so immunofluorescent test is very straightforward test so here <coughs> presence of viral antigen can be detected by a uh, specific viral antiviral antibody so for example if i want to detect hepatitis virus then i will take anti hepatitis antibodies and these antibodies will be coated with uh, certain fluorophores okay some uh, some light emitting substance i will add to this uh, antibodies that can be detected under uv microscope so uh, if it is a if primary antibody directly coated with indicator then it is called direct immunofluorescence test if primary antibody is targeted with a secondary antibody then it is called as indirect immunofluorescence test so with the help of this immunofluorescence test we can able to detect virus in the culture say for example this is a cam membrane of the egg so this is the coriolanthoic membrane of egg which was infected with pox virus now the pox viral antigens this this is um, stained with immunofluorescence okay immunofluorescence dye upon staining with immunofluorescence dye when we are observing under the microscope this is the image that we can observe all the green color patterns all the green color areas are virus actually this is the actual virus which is present in uh, uh, which is present in this uh, egg so all green indicates uh, you know, pox virus so this is how we can able to detect viruses with the help of immunofluorescence test or this pox virus can also be detected by just seeing certain nodules on the cam membrane so visually with the help of nodules we can detect this virus or with the help of uh, immunofluorescence test we can able to precisely see the actual location of the virus in the uh, embryonated egg okay so this method of detection is called as immunofluorescence uh, test ఇంట్లో okay actually i forgot um, i thought you you already had this uh, topic in immunology i think still that subject is not uh, there for you one second i will take uh, an empty slide i will tell you immunofluorescence test in a nutshell say for example listen to me uh, here i have a tissue so this is a tissue sample in this tissue maybe i have hepatitis virus so hepatitis virus i need to detect okay so hepatitis sir, sir uh, there is no screen or slide oh okay one second i will share the screen i will tell what is immunofluorescence test to you okay now now i'm discussing immunofluorescence test listen to me very carefully see in immunology we have a concept called antigen and antibody what is antigen and what is antibody say for example let us assume a human okay so uh, he this person got infected by hepatitis so hepatitis is a virus okay this virus entered into his body now this virus will be treated as an antigen in the body so hepatitis is an antigen which will uh, the meaning of antigen is antibody generators actually uh, uh, simply 
once the virus entered into the body, the body will prepare antibodies against this hepatitis. These are called antibodies. And these antibodies are viral specific. These antibodies are highly specific to the hepatitis. These antibodies won't react with other uh, antigens. Hepatitis antibodies only react with hepatitis antigen. Uh, HIV antibodies react with only HIV. So antibodies are always viral specific. So what I'm going to do is, I got an unknown patient uh, with suspected hepatitis infection. So what I will do is, I will take antibodies. This we can commercially, we can able to produce these antibodies, okay? These are available. So anti-hepatitis antibodies I will take. So these are anti-hepatitis antibodies. Now, I can't detect these antibodies directly under the microscope because antibodies are transparent in nature. That is why what I will do is, I will add a color substance to it. I will add a small coloring substance, which is called fluorofluor. So I will add a fluorofluor substance to this antibody. Now I will add these antibody solution to the culture. If there is hepatitis antigen, obviously my antibodies will bind. And these antibodies can be visualized under UV microscope. Under UV microscope, we can able to see green color uh, coloration. Presence of green coloration indicates the presence of hepatitis antigen or virus. Say, for example, patient don't have hepatitis, then these antibodies won't bind to the tissue, right? Upon wash, the antibodies will be floated. Uh, they will be washed because there is no hepatitis virus. So here I'm cleverly using antibodies to detect the virus by coloring the antibodies. I just uh, color coded the antibodies with some fluorophore. This fluorophore, uh, this fluorophore can be seen in UV microscope. So that's it. So it's a very clever method of detection of viral presence. So we will use uh, uh, viral specific antibodies. These antibodies can be commercially available. So we have many uh, that is called a hybridome or monoclonal technology. With the help of that, we can able to pr produce uh, uh, viral specific antibodies in in vitro conditions. That means outside the body. So with the help of these okay. antibodies, we will detect the virus. Is it clear? So yes, yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> So this is all about, okay, uh, or I will give you one more example. For example, um, I'm telling you about a COVID test with immunofluorescein concept. Um, imagine a person already got infection, COVID infection, and he recovered. He recovered from the COVID infection. Upon recovery, what happened in, within his body? His body may produced enough antibodies to protect him from the virus. So now this person will have antibodies, COVID antibodies in his body. Now what I will do is, I will take this uh, recovered COVID patient blood and I will filter his antibodies. I will take his serum. Serum will have this co anti-COVID antibodies, right? Now I will yes, code, sir. yeah, this anti-COVID anti antibodies I, I will add some coloring substance to these antibodies and I will use this antibodies, his serum, as a reagent for detection of further blood tests. So now I can take his serum and I can add a drop of his serum to the blood test, you know, to the suspected uh, COVID bloods, bloods, okay? And I can visualize it. Uh, it is not as, is as easy as it sounds, okay? There are some complicated steps that we need to do. But in a nutshell, this is what the principle of an immunofluorescein test. <coughs> so with the help of mm, immunofluorescein test, we can able to detect any type of virus. Just we need to take an appropriate uh, uh, antibodies to the targeted virus or the, to the targeted antigens. So this is all about the immunofluorescein test. So this is enough for today's students. I thought of discussing pathogenesis of viral infection. This we can proceed uh, uh, tomorrow. Most probably by next week, we may finish uh, the unit one and unit two. So I need only five more lectures to finish uh, your uh, virology actually. Okay. So this is all, all about today's class. So in today's yes. lecture, we discussed about uh, methods of detection of virus. So we have six methods of detection. First one is cytopathic effects. Second one, inclusion bodies. Third one, heme absorption, interference, transformation, and immunofluorescein tests. Now, a quick Q&A session. Everyone must respond. 
okay so uh, carcinogenic viruses can be detected by what method carcinogenic viruses can be detected by which method of which method among this tell me students the transformation very good transformation transformation very good uh, herpes viruses for example very good then uh, mm, syncytium formation is seen in what viral infection I think uh, one second. Uh, I think I got some internet problem. Um, can you hear me, students? Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, syncytium formation yes, is sir. seen in what viral infection? Syncytium formation is seen in what viral infection? Mm. Syncytium formation. What is syncytium formation? Can anyone say? What is syncytium formation? Yes, students. <coughs> what is syncytium formation? OK, what are the types of cytopathic effects? Tell me the types of cytopathic effects quick. Types of cytopathic hmm? Sir, the measles. Measles, very good. Measles is correct answer for um, syncytium formation. Now tell me types of uh, um, cytopathic effects. Types of cytopathic effects. How many types the we have? Syncytium formation. Very good. Cell, cellular clumping. Cellular clumping, very good. Rounding of cell. Rounding of cells. And we have one more. Cell. Cell necrosis. Cell necrosis. Yes, okay. Cell necrosis. Uh, cell necrosis is uh, shown by what virus? Hepatitis B. Very good. Enterovirus. Very good. Enteroviruses and hepatitis B. Very good. And uh, enterovirus like uh, polio virus. Okay. Then uh, um, rounding of cells are seen by herpes virus. Herpes viruses. Very good. Then uh, clumping of cells. Cellular clumping. Adenovirus. Adenovirus. Very good. Then uh, by what method I can able to detect uh, influenza virus, which will be the best method to detect influenza virus. Method of detection of influenza virus. Keep in mind influenza virus has this uh, hemagglutinin spikes. So which method will be appropriate to detect influenza virus? <coughs> Method to detect influenza virus. Very less responses. Heme absorption. OK, so with the help of heme absorption, we can able to detect uh, influenza virus. Then um, what are inclusion body students? Can you define inclusion bodies? What are inclusion bodies? Waste material of virus. So intercellular um, globular material of virus. Yeah, we cannot say waste material. Okay, fine. Uh, they are intracellular viral leftovers. Upon viral replication, yes. virus will left over. Such substances can be stated as uh, inclusion models. Waste, okay. They are waste bodies only, but uh, waste won't be an appropriate word. Okay, just for your reference, I said it. I know that is my mistake. I, I given this waste word to you. Uh, you should not use wo uh, waste materials in the answer. Okay, uh, during answers. Oh, okay, fine. So, yes, Mohini. Uh, now, uh, what will be the location of uh, 
DNA inclusion bodies. What type of inclusion bodies we can see in DNA virus? Types of inclusion bodies. Tell me the locations. Intra. Intra cytoplasmic and intra nuclear. Very good. Then, uh, um, can you give examples of intra cytoplasmic inclusion bodies? Any examples? The negri okay. bodies. Negri bodies no, in, in what virus? Rabies. In rabies. Uh, virus. Body is in small One year in smallpox. Very good. Uh, at least two are enough. Box. Okay. Very yes. good, students. Then polio virus. What type of inclusion body is shown by polio virus? Sir, intranuclear. Intranuclear. Acidophilic cowdery type B. Very good. Cowdery type B. Cowdery type B. Acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies will be shown by polio virus. Then what about uh, adenovirus? So, so basophilic, 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 type basophilic, yes, intranuclear. Very good students. Then herpes viruses. Sir, acidophilic uh, cowder type A. Very good students. A. Very good. Yes, mm, very good. Then, uh, mm, okay. Uh, how can we able to detect non-cytopathogenic virus? How to detect a non-cytopathogenic virus? Uh, interference interference test okay what uh, interference challenge test uh, what yes. challenge virus we will use in interference challenge test what is the challenge virus usually it will be measles inhibit kar dega sir us growth ko non cytopathogenic ke liye cytopathogenic virus use karenge correct yes. very good students very good deepak uh, shivani kaushik anukriti mohini and tarun only these are <coughs> responding I don't know what happened to others, but you must study your okay, students. Be attentive to the classes. Um, so this is enough for today. I will download your attendance and you can leave students. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes, yes, students. Yes.